when did you meet uh, this uh, Krishna Mal Jagannatha? You had no. You I met know. Her. I even have a photo. Somebody took a photo of her uh -huh. with me. Yeah. Where did you meet her? You went to see her, or uh, you went to meet her for a specific purpose. Huh. Also, there was one person from CPI. A, also came with you and Krishnama, all three of you went from her place to a village. Oh. Do you remember that? Uh, if I if I look at my Venmani book, mm. I could see mm. if there is anything in the pa earlier past mm -hmm. about Venmani. Mm -hmm. That I had gone with these people but when many could I might have gone with them, is it? You, went, you did. You did go with them. I you did? You went with them only. Is that what is written in it? Yes, that's what is written. What is written. In, I have myself written? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. This is what is memory loss. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, we all have memory loss. Don't worry. Dear Amma, this letter is written so that you can remember a couple of things, especially the things that bother you currently. Keep this letter with you always and keep reading it. Recently, you have been feeling very sad. But let me tell you a few things that will help you feel better, I hope. For the last five years, you have been losing your memories and feeling somewhat disoriented and confused. This is because of an illness, a memory virus that eats away your memories. This is not a sign of mental weakness or anything like that. And this is certainly not your fault. They are making a film about you, a documentary film. What all you have done in your life? Ni CITU la work panna de, ni Kirvan Mani pona de, ni Madhar Sangam Jaranayaka Madhar Sangat la work panna de, apro ni CPIM la irinde de communist katchi la irinde de, apro ni gram gram ma poyi nariya idal na panna de. Organizing work, they are making this film about you, about what all you contributed. You have done in English, Tamil, you have speeches, your life. Sorry, that's all. That's all. That's all. That's all. That's all. That is important. Maithali, we are going to chat, okay, on lots of things, many, oh. many things uh, that um, some you will remember, some you may not remember, but doesn't matter, I'll make you remember, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the... That's me. This is you, with yeah. a little... With a... Tota. <laughs> a toy, very joyous, yes, smiling yes. away, huh? Yeah. Uh, and this is not very joyous. Mm -hmm. No, very, uh, like a... Film actress and all, no? Yeah, I wonder. 
This, uh, this is, is me and my mom. Yeah, uh, this is yeah. just such a beautiful picture. This is a lovely picture. I like this one very much. Uh, and this, this, this seems to be some old picture. This was uh, earlier when mm. we were all here. Mm. This was a group of friends. We mm. were very close to each other. Studious, <laughs> studious Maithili, <laughs> huh? who turns into a brilliant Maithili yeah, because then oh the Lord. professor says that she's the most brilliant student <laughs> here. <laughs> so I want to ask you a little bit about what led you to go to the US? Because for one thing, at that time, everybody was thinking of, oh, you're going to US. So I thought their education might be much better than ours. Mm. I don't know if it is, uh, mm. if I can even say that now. But also, I think uh, if you look at it from what we were speaking about earlier, all of us, me too, we've been through somewhat of a sheltered uh, middle class background. Definitely. Right? Definitely. And didn't actually um, interact with the range of possibilities that existed, which seemed to have opened up for you when you went there. Is this? This is me in this the U.S. You do? <laughs> wow! And this is um, in uh, the university where you went to study, no? Yes. Okay. 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 M.S. in Catskill, New York. Now is the time to make real the promises of democracy. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation to the sunlit path of racial justice. 1963 is not an end, but a beginning. I have a dream that one day... She was very much interested in uh, Martin Luther King. Myself and my father visited her oh. in 1968. Yeah, before her return, we visited the uh, USA. He had made arrangements for us to stay in a uh, motel. Hotel, and then uh, she shared her room with another uh, girl there. When we went, uh, it said uh, on the wall, "Our king will shall never die." She was very politically uh, political inclinations were very great. You see, usually people always look for big jobs, fat salaries, big jobs. Mm. That was not my sister. That mm. kind of ambition was not hers. My father did not. Uh, sort of like that. Okay. For a long time here, she had not settled down. She was wondering. He was wondering uh, what was, uh, was going to be her future. Nosotros queremos construir el socialismo. Nos hemos declarado partida partidarios de los que luchan por la paz. Nos hemos declarado dentro del grupo de países no alineados. Interestingly, I think the story starts not quite in Benmani or even India, but in the uh, city of New York, where she was working for the Committee on Decolonization as a research associate. And I think she was very influenced by the debates in that committee, which involved newly independent African nations. And that committee, she must have heard a lot of debates on the future of these new nations, how were they going to address hunger, poverty, land relations, and so on. But I think basically she was under the spell of Che Guevara. I mean, she did make a trip to Cuba, a clandestine visit to Cuba in the late 60s. And two things about Cuba fascinated her. The way they had settled the land question and their extraordinary efforts at cultivating universal literacy. Well, a juicio de ustedes el nombre que debe tener nuestro partido. ¿Cuál es? ¿Cuál es, compañero? ¿Cuál es? Un compañero de aquí. Los compañeros de acá. Los compañeros de allá. 
los compañeros de allá. Partido Comunista de Cuba. Oh. <coughs> See, I had, um, I somehow read a lot about Castro and people talked about them, interested people, and uh, then I, I felt that um, if only I can talk to Castro, all my wishes will be <laughs> fulfilled. I didn't know what I can wish at that time. <laughs> because you, you come all the way to the US, yes. what have you done? You know, what is it that you can give with your people? And you tell them, you know, Castro, you know what kind of a man he is? You give me 10 minutes, I can tell you something about. <laughs> Maitri. Cuba. Cuba. Yes. June 10th. June 10th. 1968. I was by myself. Nobody else will come with me. There was uh, some Cubans. One of them who also spoke very good English. And he had written in English, he will be having a car there or something and uh, I will pick you up. I was so thrilled, I said I can go. Jose told me so many things, so I asked him, I don't know anything about Cuba, but why is America making such a nuisance of, not even nuisance, killings? You have a small country, it's yeah. not a huge thing. It's a small little island in the ocean, that's all. Then he said, no, those fellows, a small island also they want. They don't want anybody else to have anything else. He said, why don't you see our country? So much we are doing and you can, we will take you to so many places, you can see. And um, I have gone all over the place, met a lot of nice people. They were all very, you know, very courageous and they thought they were going to get it. So now then came the question of how am I going back? Mm -hmm. It was not their problem, it was very much my okay. <laughs> problem. Mm -hmm. So US won't uh, give a uh, entry, so they said there is a small airplane. Jose said you can easily go, mm -hmm. just try go and sit there and you say that you don't understand their language and they won't understand your language and you don't know English you say. <laughs> Anyway, like that, mm -hmm. I happily went, no, not really happily, but because was something was said. A anxious. But fortunately, when I came to uh, this country, I had only one bag. Who would carry a big, yeah. this thing, a small bag? Mm -hmm. So I went with that bag. Mm -hmm. He, 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 I smiled at that uh, <laughs> aircraft, uh, the pilot. And he was looking at me also, who is this one suddenly getting into our my this thing? Bu -bu 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 -bu. I said, uh, <laughs> So what strikes me is the extraordinary journey she's made from where she started out, which is a regular middle class 
uh, Brahmin household in uh, central Madras. Quite an extraordinary displacement of her social personality from its caste class location into a kind of politics of mass movements and comradeship. And when she came back to India, oddly enough, she visited Vinobaji's ashram because she thought perhaps the Sarvodaya movement, which was in the forefront of land distribution, might uh, hold a few answers. But as she later remarked, uh, while she was very impressed with Vinobaji himself, she felt this wasn't the sort of militant land struggles of her imagination. There were these momentous happenings, but she was not going to let them slip by. She would seek to engage with the times on her own terms. When the Vinmani thing happened, uh, Maitli and I did not know each other. But I was in India at that time. I had come back from the UK. And I also saw it. I also was very shocked. But it didn't occur to me that I should go there and see and do things like that. I was sh shocked and uh, kept reading about it. And that was it. Uh, nothing more than that. I was going to my work and coming back. and. Uh, sort of thing. So, but she was different. And, uh, Andre. சென்னையில் எனது பெற்றோர் வீட்டில் சமீபத்தில் எனது சகோதரனுக்கு திருமணமானதை ஒட்டி விருந்து நடந்து கொண்டிருந்தது அப்போது வானொலியில் செய்தி கேட்ட என் நண்பர் ஒருவர் வெண்மணியில் நடந்த கொலை வெறியாட்டம் பற்றி எனக்கு போன் செய்தார் சில நிமிடங்களுக்கு என் உணர்வுகள் மறுத்து போயின இது எப்படி நடக்க முடியும் அதுவும் தமிழ்நாட்டில் ஆனால் இப்படிப்பட்ட குரூரங்கள் நமது ஏற்றத்தாழ்வுகள் மலிந்த கிராமங்களில் சகஜமானதுதான் என்றும் இவை வெளிவருவது அதிசயம் என்றும் புரிந்து கொள்ள நீண்ட நாளாகவில்லை வெகு விரைவாக தஞ்சைக்கு சென்று மக்களை நேரில் சந்தித்து உண்மையை தெரிந்து கொண்டு விவரங்களை பத்திரிகைகளில் எழுதினால் இந்திய ஜனநாயகத்தின் உண்மையான முகத்தை வெளிக்கொண்டு வரலாம் என்ற ஆர்வம் என்னை உந்தியது வெண்மணி வீரர்கள் விவசாய தோழ 
ಮಾಡಿದವರ್ಗಾಳ್ ವೆಂದ ಮಡಿಂದಾರ್ಗಳು ಎತಲೈವ ವೇದನೈ ಅಡೈಂದಾರ್ಗಳು ನಾಪತಿ ನಾಲ್ ಪೇರ ಒರ್ ವೀಟಲ್ ಪೋಟಡಚಿ ಪೆಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಬೀಸಿ ಟಾಲೆ ಎಂತಲೈವ ತೀಯುಂದ ಕೊಳಿತಿಟ್ಟಾಳೆ ಈ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡೂರ್ which now it is uh, two districts of nagapatnam and tiruvaru here in the early 40s it was the worst type of oppression to the uh, agricultural workers and mainly they were dalits and so this uh, this uh, oppression against that they were uh, mobilized and they were prepared to hit back and so if you are beaten up you hit them back that was the slogan it adicha therapy adi vaadi nu sonna poda nu sollu when we came to sikkal it was very dark at that time we found a jeep uh, coming from behind and uh, then this fellow with a veshti and a big uh, misai <laughs> he jumped out of the jeep and uh, immediately he decided that i belong to ajita's group and at that time kerala's naxalite leader narayanan and his daughter ajita ajita uh, became a very very famous actor very this thing mm. and he said ah i know that you are a keralaite girl mm. then i said i want to write about what happened in venmani and when i said that he said let the police uh, the police can look after all this you have nothing to do mm. this is not your job mm. and mm. and i said if you people do your job well people like me don't have to be tuppariyum sambu and a policemen were all very tough that day mm. who do you think you know, the way they speak to you yeah. is just awful yeah 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 and uh, and i used to feel fortunately at that time i never cried mm. i was getting uh, more and more angry mm-hmm. nowadays i'll be uh, i'll be sweating and uh, this thing mm. then i felt very bad guess as a child the one thing that i remember very distinctly is the sound of the typewriter <laughs> she had this old typewriter uh-huh. and she was always hammering away at and the other early memory of my mother that i have is of several friends uh-huh. coming home uh-huh. young people then in the left movement uh-huh. and uh, who were who obviously looked up to my mother as a leader and a mentor and plus a very warm and caring person and uh, talking politics all the time I mean there was no way in which I was sort of insulated from the political atmosphere of my home. There was this sense that I should uh, I should grow up knowing about India completely, its social and political realities, mm. stories of oppression as well should be part of mm. so that there is no no tendency to romanticize any part of uh, Indian reality. So 
when I was about two to two and a half years old, my grandmother would tell me the story of the Ramayana and my mother would tell me the story of Kirvan Mani mm -hmm. telling. So I would be asked in front of relatives and family friends to narrate the story of the Ramayana. And then as soon as I did that, my mother would say, and now you tell us the story of Kirvan Mani and what happened there? And then I would uh, reel off the story of the Pola the Panayar, <laughs> uh, the symbolic landlord uh, feudal yeah. uh, oppressor yeah. and how he ended up burning all these people alive okay. and that was as much a part of my uh, story hearing and storytelling as the story of the Ramayana was. you know how you signed your name ms ms huh michael e sivaraman ada you signed it ada ada vandu kai eda kai valikum bol அண்ட்ரஸ்ட்ரியன்ஸ்ட்ரிக்ட் <laughs> In the strict ostrich-like tradition of scores of such committees, it recommended a symbolic wage revision effective for three years and considered its job done. <laughs> so you didn't think much of the committee, you didn't think much of the government committee, Ma. History of the women's movement in pre-liberation China. Huh? Women's movement in... I think it was entered the party and sort of made a name for herself as an activist of the CITU of yeah. the trade union yes. and uh, I remember hearing stories about my mother appearing in the Tamil media about this woman who would say cut their heads off you uh -huh. know in terms of the factory owners a, a sort of a nightmare a terror because those were really militant trade union strikes and movements and she was in the leadership position then I remember when I was in I think this was in college when two of my friends came home and asked uh, where my mother was she was not home they said where is she and i said oh i think today she's in jail oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i remember how horrified they were at how naturally i was saying it okay. and how i was not weeping or tearing my hair out and <laughs> missing my mother and wanting to visit her in jail <laughs>
முதலில் மைத்திலி சிவராமன் அவர்களை நான் ஒரு கேள்வி கேட்க விரும்புகிறேன் பெண் விடுதலை என்பதற்கு உங்களுடைய விளக்கம் என்ன இப்போ பெண் சுதந்திரம் என்றால் என்னன்னு கேட்டீங்க இதுக்கு வந்து கொஞ்சம் முதல்ல பெண் அடிமைத்தனம் என்றால் என்னன்னு பார்க்கலாம் தோன்றுது ஒரு சின்ன சம்பவம் சில ஆண்டுகளுக்கு முன்னால் நாங்கள் தெருவில் வந்து ஒரு நிகழ்ச்சி ஒன்று நடத்தி ஒரு பெரிய பிளக்கார்டு ஒன்று எழுதி வச்சு அதில் பெண் அடிமை விலங்கொடிப்போம்னு எழுதியிருந்தோம் அப்போ பக்கத்தில் இருக்கிற கல்லூரியிலேருந்து சில மாணவர்கள்லாம் வந்து எங்கே உங்கள் விலங்குகளை கொஞ்சம் காட்டுங்களே பார்க்கலாம் நாங்கள் சொன்னோம் உங்கள் கண்ணுக்கு தெரியாதுன்னு ஏன் உங்கள் கண்ணுக்கு மட்டும் தெரியுமா நாங்கள் இல்லைங்க இது யார் கண்ணுக்குமே தெரியாது இது ஒரு இன்விசிபிள் கண்ணுக்கே புலப்படாத ஒரு விஷயம் ஆனால் இது ஒரு அழகான ஒரு பட்டு திற போட்டு மூடிட்டாங்க பண்பாடு என்ற பெயரில் இலக்கியம் என்ற பெயரில் மதம் என்ற பெயரில் மூடிட்டாங்க ஆனால் உங்கள் உள்ளத்திலையும் கூட ஆண்களாகிய உங்கள் உள்ளத்திலையும் சூழவலம் வந்து நாரணம் நம்பி நடக்கின்றான் என் எதிர் பூரண பார்க்கூடம் வைத்து புறம் எங்கும் தோரணம் நாட்ட கனா You was at some point asked about who are the people who have influenced you. And you were surprised to find that your party's name came to you immediately. This is what you've written in your book. And you were yourself surprised about it. So Party's name? Uh, somebody asked you, uh, who are the women who have influenced you? Oh, influence me. Yeah, yeah. That is, uh, I would definitely have said the Subalakshmi. Mm -hmm. Because if that madness part of her, mm -hmm. hers, was not there, mm -hmm. she, she would have been a great woman. She mm -hmm. would have been a big girl. Mm -hmm. Adhukuda, my mother used to say, I have seen her mm -hmm. without, before she got all these fits. Yeah, yeah. So, uh. she would be reading all my books, uh. um, her books. Uh, uh. Yes, that's, so, that's right. Is it because of the politics that her uh, her her husband? Mm. See, her husband's politics was uh, totally opposite of hers. Mm. So it is not as if both could be saying, oh, you know, today's what the newspaper said today. Mm. Listen, mm. and which obviously you have had with the Karnakaran, no? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh. You, you know that he is on the same wavelength as you are, no? I mean, it's not like uh, Subalakshmi. At one time, uh. we both thought we were. Uh. But after that, we were both thinking we are not. <laughs> and now you think? Now what do you think? We are partly this side, partly that side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, when did you first meet uh, uh, Maithili? Um, well, I went looking for her. Oh! <laughs> wow! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that nice? <laughs> um, no, it, uh, it worked like this. Yeah. You see, uh, I used to work uh, in a factory at uh, Avadi. And on the way, on Punamali High Road, at Kill Park, there is a news stand. It's still there. You are now in the same place. There, I once saw the Radical Review being sold. I picked it up. I was very interested. Her uh, residence was given as the address for that publication. Oh, that's interesting. That's yeah. interesting. So, so yeah. you met her. All right. And yeah. so, uh, do you remember anything else? That you had a political conversation, is it? That's right. Uh, <laughs> We were married uh, 
72 January. Oh, 72. 72 January. Yeah. But one question that uh, we discussed at that time was uh, whether I should also be f fully involved mm -hmm. uh, in the movement full time, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. she was. Mm -hmm. That was the only question that was uh, okay. being uh, mm -hmm. uh, looked at. So we decided that uh, she will do the work, I will uh, look after the home side. Home and keep, keep the uh, kitchen fire burning. You see, uh, when Kalpana was about to be born, we came back to the older house so that her mother would be around, would help her. If you speak to Kalpana, mm. she would say, it's not uh, my mother who brought me up, it's my grandmother who brought me up. That's okay. what she would say. Yeah. She used to travel a lot uh, yeah. for different meetings, different yeah. places. In the uh, earlier years, her main involvement was with one union called Tablet India. So that was, she was very involved mm -hmm. in that emotionally and uh, there were also the girls who were very attached to her and all that. Does it matter? Does it matter? Does it really matter? It's not. It's not uh, it doesn't matter. Get upset. No, it doesn't oh, matter. I see you people don't. That's uh, five percent. Put a table in. Which one? Yes, yes. So, so the, real, the real people who were comrades of yours and went with you will never think like that. Oh, that is true. So what does it matter? It doesn't matter. <laughs> some of us have been uh, thinking of over the past few years is how do we think about uh, feminist activism in independent India. <coughs> but we haven't really um, mapped out or at least not for in all the variety that it requires to be done, the various contexts that propel us into feminist activism and into building a body of feminist thought. And these contexts have been very, very diverse, reflecting our various regional histories, reflecting also the kinds of uh, political movements we've all been linked with. Because one of the uh, commonsensical notions that perhaps we may want to re-examine is that the women's movement is such a separatist thing that it had nothing to do with other movements. Not true at all. At every point in our activism, we've had conversations with other movements, bitter fights with some, uh, mild disagreements with other. But basically, there's always been a relationship to other political movements in this country. And the choice of political movement has been shaped by our own location.
So you sort of discovered your grandmother only after she died. Is that what you're saying? Because uh, you have a we, memory, you know, mostly. Hmm. She died only after I came yeah. back, I think. Yeah. But by then, she was not speaking to anybody. But later, um, I, I wanted to read about her, hmm. all her books. Hmm. See, I didn't, because when I went to her library and opened it, she wouldn't like it. Mm -hmm. She will uh, look at me and said, uh, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I would not touch it. Huh. But after that, after her, she was over, huh. all of us were uh, there. Huh putting our fingers on the books. And uh, some of them were so good. My mother used to say, this book was her favorite. Gurudev. Gurudev. Uh -huh. Oh God, yes. That Gurudev thing I, I had forgotten uh -huh. because she was mad about this Gurudev uh, uh -huh. thing. See, the yeah. whole thing is, she can read anything. Yeah. And if I get her something, she will say, oh, how nice. You know, her eyes suddenly become big mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. it meant a lot to her. Mm. In those days, mm. women could do nothing. Mm. That was the worst thing. And some people could take it. But my poor gran, she was an idealist mm. and um, nothing like, then so many things we forgot, mm. you know. Mm. You, you, now that you are asking me, mm. I think of so many things, what did she say, what Gamma said? said. Generally, seeing my mother going through the process of, uh, in a sense, excavating Subalakshmi's life, and she did much of it during a period of personal illness as well, and but uh, gave so much of herself to that book. I mean, it's given me a sense of how difficult this whole business can be. Um, at, at the same time, as what a wonderful thing it is when it's done, when you do it, when you undertake to do it.
I think the everyday context of our life now is monotony, tedium and the lack of the meaningful social activity that was all about her life earlier. For instance, I find myself lecturing to her often, giving her very useless and foolish lectures about how she should watch more movies. I keep telling her, you're retired. You should not worry about being, you know, about being able to make a point that is useful or write an article that people read. Why does it even matter anymore? But then I, I realized that that's all that's ever mattered to her. Yes. So then, um, what does it mean to also, when you're in public life like this, and uh, it's not as if the world is such a, is such a vastly improved place that you can retire anyway. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to say that you must retire? Yes. To retire means what? Yes. Dear Comrade Papa, as you know, I have not been able to function properly for the last few years because of ill health. I think I need a year's leave to get some treatment and recover. Physical and mental fatigue compel me to take the step. With apologies, Maithili. ஊடகங்களை <laughs> <laughs> குழந்தைகளிடத்தில் நம்பிக்கைக்குரிய வகையில் இதெல்லாம் எடுத்து உள்ள போட்டு நீட்டா வேற எல்லாத்தையும் போட்டுலாம் கோர்ட்டுக்கு 
correct correct only and then you wrote a piece saying gentlemen killers of venmani then you wrote a piece saying gentlemen killers of venmani at the epw la vandathu पापा चंद्र आसे तंबी वासुकी सुंदरम सरोजा मरुदा अम्बा चिनापिनाधि वासुकी कुंजम्मा पीटी रणजीवे इंडम कीड़वणि कालम விடுதலை 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 